In today's video, we'll be going over the story of a special operations dog and his handler working alongside Naval Special Warfare Development Group. With this story, there will be graphic images and details of the damages these canines are capable of inflicting upon our nation's enemies. So with that, viewer's discretion is advised for this video. But if you guys are into military type combat stories like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. But if you guys don't enjoy this video for any reason, feel free to hit that dislike button and make sure you leave me a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve my future stories. Any and all feedback is greatly appreciated here. But with that being said, let's get right into today's story. William Clark enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in 1997. Then after four years, he decided to switch to the Navy for the chance to work with dogs. He grew up in a dysfunctional household and found safe haven in the company of his family pet dogs. So he had always had a great relationship with canines and figured he could make a fantastic career as a dog handler within the Navy. In 2005, he made the cut as a dog handler for the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, better known as DEVGRU, the Navy's elite special missions unit. Clark had already served three combat deployments when he and his teammates landed their helicopters outside a compound where a high-ranking Taliban commander was holed up. Clark and his partner Axe, a Belgian Malinois special operations working dog, were among the first out of the chopper and immediately came under fire, shooting back until the bullets stopped flying. As they approached the house to make entry, the SEALs called for Axe to enter the building. Clark used a laser to direct Axe to the building. The dog wore an infrared strobe so Clark could track him through night vision goggles. He watched as Axe entered the room and immediately went steel, which is his sign to his handler that he had spotted possible danger within the room. Inside, Clark found Axe staring at two rolled up rugs. When the team unrolled the rugs, they revealed a cache of fully loaded machine guns, their first score of the night. As Clark and his teammates started to leave the room, a drone circling overhead spotted numerous enemy combatants moving to surround them. Being completely Completely surrounded and outnumbered, the team decided to split their assault force into two different elements and continue their search through the compound for the high-ranking Taliban commander. Clark's element continued on to another building within the compound where the team found an animal-sized door. So Clark sent Axe in and the team waited silently outside. Then they suddenly heard the screams, the infamous screams the team was so used to hearing that only Axe could get a Taliban fighter to make. The team rushed in the building and found Axe in a pitch black room, darting between two men, biting them back and forth as quickly as he could to keep them disoriented and unable to fight back. The team quickly finished them off and Axe lunged for the next room, but Clark quickly grabbed his harness not knowing what was inside the room, which ended up being a fantastic move on Clark's part because glancing inside the room it was full of women and children which later on one of the SEALs praised Clark for that quick decision. Because of him, no women and children were harmed by the Belgian Malinois. After working their way through other areas of the compound, the team moved out toward a nearby open field. It was there Clark spotted a man hiding behind a tree out in the distance. So once again, Clark aimed his laser out towards the tree, sending Axe out to engage the target. Axe rushed out towards the target and instantly snapped his jaws onto the enemy fighter's arm and remained attached, dangling from the man's body as the panicked fighter ran towards a building that hadn't been cleared yet by the team. Suddenly, gunfire erupted. Clark and his teammates dropped to the ground, searching for cover in the open field. Bullets sliced through the night sky, flying from all directions, and Axe was stuck out in the middle of all of it. As bullets ricocheted around the field and U.S. air assets dropped bombs nearby to help thin out the enemy's numbers, Clark screamed for Axe at the top of his lungs. Through the chaos, Clark could barely see Axe trying his hardest to make his way back to the team, but only stumbling repeatedly and falling over. It was clear from his body language that he was hit and badly disoriented. But Clark couldn't bear to see his dog suffer out in that empty field alone and afraid, so in the middle of all the gunfire, he got up 
and ran to him. Under intense fire from all directions, Clark was able to reach Axe and pulled him towards a small structure the team had already cleared. Axe fought his handler the whole way, pulling and pulling, trying to get back out there in the fight. Clark fumbled in the dark to find where Axe had been shot, his fingers checking the fur underneath the dog's vest and finding nothing. Then through his night vision goggles, he saw steam coming out of Axe's head. He touched the top of Axe's skull, felt bone fragments, exposed skin, and blood. Meanwhile, the SEALs are still in intense combat. The troop chief called for Axe to get back out here in the fight, but Clark answered him, He's been hit in the head, sir. He's done for the night. As the fight continued on, Air Force pararescue man David Keaton, acting as the team's medic, made it to the shelter and gave Axe a shot of morphine. But even with that, it wasn't looking good for Axe. The bullet had struck under his left eye, bounced off the cheekbone, then exited out of the top of his skull. His left eye protruding from its socket. Keaton wrapped gauze bandages around Axe's eye and the top of his head. Clark waited for another hour for the firefight to end. Finally, the medevac came and the dog was the first one on. Thankfully, Axe did survive, but he lost sight in his left eye. And during his workup for his next deployment, he kept bumping into walls and all sorts of things, making it clear he would have to retire. He left active service with a purple heart and a bronze star with valor for the raid that night. Clark, who went on to serve 11 total combat deployments before retiring in September 2021, received an end of deployment award for the period of October 9th to December 15th, 2007, but many who were there that night say it's not enough. Keaton, the team's medic, gave a statement in 2019 on Clark's behalf, saying, I personally witnessed Clark and his dog find eight enemy personnel that night, and he himself engaged all enemy fighters alongside his teammates. Some believe he may have been overlooked for an award after the raid because he is not a SEAL, but rather a military working dog handler. As for Axe, after his life in the Navy, he spent his final seven years with a veterinarian and his family. He lived a normal, happy dog's life, snuggling up on a couch, chewing on bones. But with that, guys, that's going to be the end of today's story. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. If you have any recommendations for stories you think I should cover here on the channel, be sure to drop them down in the comment section below, and I will give them a look. But I hope you guys all have a fantastic day, and I will talk to you guys later.